Hello and welcome to News Review. After a huge effort to get up to date with the transposition of EU directives, Gibraltar is entitled to ask the European Union that it too play by the rules. This was the main message that Chief Minister Fabian Picardo and Deputy Chief Minister Joseph Garcia got across to members of the European Parliament of all political hues in Brussels. Mr Picardo accused Spain of hypocrisy for alleging that Gibraltar doesn't comply with EC measures, while itself reneging on the 2006 Cordoba agreements. And he said this hypocrisy is becoming evident to everybody he's been speaking to. Our news editor Stephen Nish was in Brussels this week. It was an early start for the Gibraltar delegation with an 8.30 meeting scheduled with the chair of the European Parliament's Transport and Tourism Committee, Brian Simpson, MEP. Four hours later, at a briefing with the Gibraltar media in Brussels to cover the event, Mr Picardo told us how that meeting had gone. I think Brian Simpson, who is somebody who's now retiring, has been around for long enough to remember the days from 1987 onwards when even uh, the position of the British government wasn't one that covered them in glory and excluded Gibraltar from the provisions of EU liberalization of the airspace at the time. Um, and I think the work that he has done as uh, chairman of the commission has enabled uh, MEPs of all different complexions with all different sorts of issues to table amendments in what is now known as the co-decision procedure, which allows the parliament to put issues to the council before a, a directive becomes a law. Well, that has worked very well, not just in relation to Gibraltar, but in relation to a myriad matters, and it's enabled uh, Gibraltar MEPs to move the directive draft into the sort of language that might be more acceptable to us, although it's not perfect, uh, before it's put to the deck of the council. In all his meetings, the chief minister has been at pains to emphasize that Gibraltar is keen to play, and indeed is playing by the EU rules. In the first 14 months of his government, he focused on getting up to date with EU legislation. Now it's payback time. Certainly, look, my message has been one of saying I was elected in December 2011. There were over 60 directors overdue. I didn't want to come here until I corrected that. I came here first in February, March last year. I had dealt with the problem. Gibraltar was fully up to date. We remain fully up to date, and we've got visibility over the next 18 months of what the deadlines of directive coming towards us are to ensure we can stay up to date. And as Commissioner Barnier said to me, he's the commissioner with responsibility for the internal market. I saw him last year. I'll see members of his Directorate General this year, that is the right way to start a meeting with a European Union Commission official. The attempt by Spain last week to block the application to Gibraltar of proposed legislation on air passenger rights has reminded many that the Spanish government had already agreed that the ROC should be included in such measures under the Cordova agreements. Today, Mr. Picardo spoke of a pre-Cordova, a post-Cordova and the future. Well, look, pre-Cordoba means 1987 airport agreement suspending the application of Gibraltar airport from EU liberalization measures. Post-Cordoba means the agreement between the United Kingdom and Spain that that should no longer be the case and Gibraltar airport should inclu be included. And the future can only mean one thing, that either with the post-Cordoba language or otherwise, Gibraltar airport must be included in any air liberalization measures that apply to the rest of the European Union. There is no good reason why not. Gibraltar complies with all the obligations of the European Union Club. Spain wants to use the obligations of the European Union Club as a stick with which to beat us when she tries to pretend falsely and mendaciously that we don't comply with those rules. So, when the time comes, what's good on the one side, which is to say Gibraltar must comply and must comply fully with obligations, we must also have the benefits of membership of the European Union. Spain cannot be allowed to get away with saying Gibraltar is a member of the European Union and doesn't comply with the rules and must be made to comply with the rules, false though that is, and then say... Gibraltar is not a member of the European Union, you cannot apply this favourable measure. But if she does, will the British government revisit its payment of pensions to former Spanish workers on the rock that also formed part of the Cordova Accords? 
I had very extensive meetings yesterday with representatives of the British Foreign Office. Uh, it was important that we have the chance to continue the work that we started of working together on a myriad issues that cut across uh, not just the European Union obligations, but even beyond the European Union issues that affect Gibraltar. And of course, all issues are discussed and all issues are considered and the consequences of those issues are considered as well. But look, let's be very clear. The position of the government of Gibraltar is that what Spain is doing because of its popular government, breaching its obligations and failing to comply with an international agreement like the Cordoba Agreement that was subscribed to by a previous administration should not manifest itself in pensioners losing the income which they fought so hard to achieve from the United Kingdom before. The government of Gibraltar is not going to say to the UK, stop paying Spanish pensions because Spain has dismally failed to comply with its own obligations and therefore has rendered Spain's signature on any accord really quite worthless given the way this present government has handled its uh, Cordoba obligations. Tonight, the Gibraltar delegation will be able to continue its work in a more relaxed environment at dinner in Sir Graham Watson's home. Stephen Nish, GBC News, Brussels. Meanwhile, the Chief Minister is planning to take a group of sixth form students to the heart of the European Union in Brussels. Fabian Picardo was in the EU capital for a series of meetings with members of the European Parliament. And news editor Stephen Nish spoke to him. Well, principally that we have continued the process of informing people of where Gibraltar is in the context of compliance with the European Union obligations and asking people to understand also where our rights are likely to come under attack uh, and how we need them to stand up for Gibraltar and how we need them to understand how it is that the treaties are somehow being infringed in the application to the people of Gibraltar. You mentioned the importance of this visit. You almost equated it with the visits that the government makes to the United Nations in, in New York. Can we expect to see these uh, missions to Brussels on a regular basis now? You can expect to see them on a regular basis even more often than they're happening now. I think young people need to come here also so that our future leaders understand the importance of these institutions and how their decisions affect our lives. You could even make the argument, Stephen, that the United Nations is hugely important to Gibraltar, but we have seen therefore 40 years a stalemate almost. In Brussels we see movement every day on issues that relate to Gibraltar and therefore the importance of making representations here to decision makers is almost greater than the importance of continuing to make representations in New York. Well you were mentioning how you and Dr. Garcia were here 22 years ago and you realized then the importance of coming to, to Brussels so I suppose in a way this is almost a fulfillment of a dream for you. Well, not a dream of a vision of how Gibraltar should be represented. Of course, there have been contingents from Gibraltar that have come to Brussels before. They have been more sporadic. We are showing now that we are going to come regularly. We've established at least that we come annually. The Deputy Chief Minister came without me again last year, so there were two visits last year. I'm hoping to be able to come back myself this year. I do not even discard the fact that there should be a quarterly visit to Brussels and that our representation in Brussels should be expanded to also include more senior representation and change the, the place where we have our offices. I think that is hugely important. We need to understand that a lot of decisions that affect our daily lives, a lot of things that then end up in the Gibraltar Parliament for Gibraltar to make laws on under our obligations under the European treaties, start their lives here. So really this is the long game, if you like, in the sense that uh, there isn't a, an immediate objective, something that you need to get from Brussels straight away. What you're really doing is making sure that Gibraltar stays on the EU's agenda. This is going to be something that is now constant whilst we remain members of the European Union. It's something that is hugely important going forward. The importance of what we're doing here today, in my view, is going to be dwarfed by the importance of continuing to come here in the future as the EU continues to expand the areas into which it is able to legislate through the European Parliament, etc., etc. So this is really continuing to nurture the seed that we've already planted of compliance with EU law and to grow it into really influencing the future of the Union in our own small way. And the government has taken steps to ensure Gibraltar never again falls behind with the transposition of EU legislation. At a reception for MEPs on the final evening of his lobbying trip to Brussels, the chief minister said this is because after achieving full compliance in the past 12 months, the government has also planned to ensure that it's always looking 18 months ahead at all the transposition deadlines that are due. The reception held in the European Parliament itself was a final opportunity 
to get across the Gibraltar message. The venue is only available for MEPs, and so it was Sir Graham Watson who arranged and officially hosted it. Introducing the Chief Minister, he accused Spain of discriminating against Gibraltar in matters like freedom of movement and, more recently, trying to block the application of EU measures to the ROC. Fabian Picardo again focused on Gibraltar's compliance with EU legislation. He said that not only is Gibraltar fully up to date, it's also always looking 18 months ahead at transposition deadlines to ensure that it never falls behind again. Should we ever be found wanting, should there ever for any reason be a failure of compliance by Gibraltar with any European regulation, it will be through inadvertence because Gibraltar does everything it can to ensure it does comply with the whole canon of European Union law. Well, that is a story that not many uh, first prime or chief ministers uh, can pride themselves in coming to Brussels to talk about. Uh, and I am very proud that the people of Gibraltar can come here and tell that story and be such an important part of the European project. The reception provided an opportunity for Spanish journalists to quiz Mr. Picardo on issues like tobacco smuggling, regarding which he pointed out that the problem is a hundred times worse in some Spanish ports in the Campo area. Meanwhile, Liberal Democrat MEP for Gibraltar, Sir Graham Watson, attacked rivals UKIP ahead of the European election in May. Sir Graham organized the Gibraltar government's recent lobbying trip to Brussels and is seeking re-election. He told GBC that the UK Independence Party are failing Gibraltar. Well, I think the fact that the government has made sure that Gibraltar complies with every single piece of European legislation puts Gibraltar in a very strong position for arguing its case here. Uh, obviously, there is a lot of work to be done to build up enough pressure on the Spanish government to get them to see sense and to start playing by the rules. And clearly that will help if we manage to get elected people from the mainstream political parties. One of the difficulties that we have when we go into that on Gibraltar issues is that the UKIP MEPs are never here. They don't turn up. If they do, they're not taken in seriously in the same way. We need to be able to use the full force of all the six MEPs for Gibraltar in the southwest of England to argue the Rocks case. In other news this week, Trevor Hammond was appointed the GSD's new party chairman. Mr. Hammond, who was selected from the party's executive committee, will take up the post with immediate effect. Party leader Daniel Feetham says he looks forward to working with him on the continued modernization and reorganization of the party, adding he has all the necessary qualities to help take the GSD forward. Christine Vasquez spoke to him about his plans for the party. I've been given an opportunity now to uh, restructure, reorganise the party, uh, help Danny in this task. An awful lot of work has already been done in this respect. Uh, we can see from the, uh, the modernisation of the party constitution, uh, the means by which we select our executive, the means by which we select our leader are all key changes. Uh, my appointment just is the finishing off of that process and it allows us now to, to look forward and, and really start the work of uh, campaigning for the next general election. Well, Gibraltar are going through difficult times and there are those that would say that the opposition hasn't really made enough inroads. I don't think that's entirely fair. We have been introspective for uh, the last couple of years. That's been necessary. Uh, we have made all of these changes in a relatively short period of time. And I think, to be honest, uh, no other political party has uh, faced a transition like the one uh, we have going from uh, the very strong leadership of uh, Peter Caruana, now moving on to uh, an equally capable leadership from Danny Feetham. Uh, but during that transition, uh, Danny has shown the courage to actually say, I need to do things in a different way. Uh, I'm not Peter Caruana, I have a different way of leading this party. Uh, and what he has introduced is a, a very much a, an honest and collegiate approach to uh, the, uh, the running of the party. Um, and that's very palpable now with the way... Would you say that wasn't there before with Peter Caruana? I think it's very different now. I think Pe you know, Peter Caruana's character um, was one of very, very strong and powerful leadership. 
Um, and now he's, uh, we've moved to a slightly more collegiate approach, as I say, one in which uh, everyone has a very significant input into the way both the party is run and in the development of policy.